Welcome back to the Endo Fertility Space channel. I'm Cindy, Endo and Fertility Dietitian. If you or someone you love is navigating fertility challenges or you're simply starting your trying to conceive journey, today's video is for you. In today's video, we're diving into the top supplements to support your fertility outcomes. For a deeper dive into the causes of infertility with endometriosis, check out my video on eight steps to getting pregnant with endo. I'll link it in the show notes below. If you haven't already, please like this video, share it with a friend and hit that subscribe button. Now let's get into today's video. So first on our list, omega-3 fatty acids. These healthy fats found in oily fish and algae are well known for their anti-inflammatory and immune support benefits. And this is precisely what makes them a great supplement to include in your fertility boosting supplement protocol. Several studies have shown that an adequate amount of omega-3 essential fatty acids helps to reduce inflammation. Since inflammation is a known barrier to conception with endometriosis, reducing it is a primary focus area to optimize your fertility outcomes. Additionally, a 2021 study highlighted that omega-3s may improve endometrial receptivity and reduce oxidative stress. Oxidative stress is the balance between unstable DNA damaging molecules to antioxidants in the body. As women with endometriosis, we are prone to genetic expression in the uterine microbiome that affects endometrial receptivity. That's how receptive the endometrium is to an embryo. The HOXA10 gene is one gene known to be involved in endometrial receptivity. Less expression of this gene corresponds with lower implantation rates. There are also several immune cells that tend to be high or low in endometriosis patients that can affect implantation. Low levels of CD8 cells, high levels of natural killer cells, and high levels of CD3 cells are all indicative that implantation failure or endometrial receptivity may be negatively affected. While omega-3 supplements are not the one and only thing that can affect these outcomes, it can be a helpful supplement to have in your regimen for better fertility outcomes. Aim for three to four oily fish servings weekly. If you're not a big fish person, I recommend 1.5 to three grams of a high EPA fish oil to support omega-3 needs. Next supplement on the list is vitamin D, often referred to as the sunshine vitamin. Vitamin D plays a crucial role in hormone regulation and immune function. Studies suggest that vitamin D deficiency is common in people with endometriosis and that supplementation can help modulate inflammation and potentially support implantation success. Additionally, vitamin D deficiency is a risk factor for endometrioma development. Endometriomas are known to damage the ovaries and affect AMH and fertility outcomes due to their effects on AMH. If endometriomas grow large enough, they can even make IVF inaccessible and IVF success is significantly reduced and not advised in women with an AMH under one. Supplementing 2,000 to 4,000 international units daily can be helpful for optimizing fertility outcomes with endometriosis. Next on the list of fertility boosting supplements is coenzyme Q10, also known as CoQ10 and ubiquinone or ubiquinone. This powerful antioxidant helps improve egg quality and mitochondrial function, both essential for fertility. CoQ10 can be helpful in almost any case, but especially so in women over 35 and those with diminished ovarian reserve. CoQ10 recycles vitamin E and supports energy production within egg cells. When I say mitochondrial health, I'm referring to the ability of cells throughout the body to generate energy. Poor mitochondrial function within in egg cells is tied to diminished ovarian reserve and poor response to stimulation medications in IVF. Some researchers suggest that poor outcomes in older women with older eggs is less about age and more about the decline in energy production by these eggs. CoQ10 is an excellent option for boosting energy production in egg cells. There are several studies available that show the positive benefits of CoQ10 for egg quality. Number of eggs retrieved via IVF, fertility outcomes, embryo quality, estrogen levels, and on the number of canceled IVF cycles. So in other words, there are fewer canceled IVF cycles reported with use of CoQ10. My recommendation is to supplement with anywhere between two and 600 milligrams of ubiquinol. The sooner the better prior to the start of your trying to conceive journey, or the sooner the better prior to pursuing and starting assisted reproductive technologies. If the male side of the equation isn't optimal, 
200 to 400 milligrams in men has also shown to be helpful for semen motility, count, and morphology. So next on the list is N-acetylcysteine, or NAC for short. NAC is another inflammation-fighting amino acid derivative that's been shown to reduce oxidative stress and inflammation. NAC replenishes glutathione, which is your master inflammation fighter. NAC is also especially helpful at reducing damage caused by environmental factors or toxins like BPA. NAC is especially helpful for endometriosis patients as it's been shown to counteract the negative influence of endometriosis on egg quality. Another 2023 study found that NAC improved pain, reduced lesion size, and supported fertility outcomes in endometriosis patients. Caution with NAC if you are sensitive to sulfur or have stomach lining concerns. I recommend up to 1800 milligrams daily in the most severe cases, but I might recommend a slightly lower dose in somebody who doesn't have very severe pain or severe endometriosis symptoms. Zinc is our next supplement. Zinc is an essential mineral for supporting the immune system, hormones, inflammation, and thyroid function. Hypothyroidism is a recognized contributor to subfertility in endometriosis patients. Zinc is an essential mineral responsible for T4 to T3 thyroid hormone conversion. Additionally, zinc deficiency is a known risk factor for endometrioma development, and as we've already established, endometriomas can hinder IVF outcomes, egg quality, embryo quality, and overall fertility outcomes. My recommendation is anywhere from 15 to 50 milligrams of zinc daily based on your needs. Caution because zinc and copper are antagonistic, meaning if one is high, the other one tends to be low, and copper is implicated in the way that we circulate iron throughout the body. So caution here, especially if you have a history with iron deficiency anemia. Okay, next on the list is vitamin C and vitamin E. These are both potent antioxidants that help fight inflammation, especially when taken together. Vitamin C and E also recycle one another, allowing the inflammation fighting capacity of both to last longer and support inflammation reduction better. Research has shown that taking vitamin C and E together showed marked improvements in measurable markers of inflammation and oxidative stress, which can promote fertility outcomes, positive fertility outcomes in somebody with endo due to inflammation being a common barrier to success. Research shows that when there is enough vitamin E in ovarian follicles, egg quality tends to be higher. The number of mature eggs is also reported to be higher, and the percentage of abnormal or immature eggs is reported to be lower. In addition to vitamin C being a potent antioxidant, studies show progesterone boosting benefits of vitamin C, which is important for sustaining a pregnancy because progesterone is our progestation hormone. I would also group melatonin in with vitamin C and E for its strong inflammation fighting capacity. Melatonin also helps support mitochondrial function, egg quality, and sleep quality. As we age, melatonin levels naturally decline. As a result, the ovaries start to lose their natural protector against oxidative stress. Studies show melatonin concentration in follicle fluids has great benefit for egg maturation and embryo development. Another study showed that when melatonin was started one month before IVF, the users were twice as likely to have top quality embryos than those not supplementing melatonin. My recommendation is to pair 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C with 800 international units of vitamin E. If you can find a whole food option of the vitamin C supplement, like the one that's made by Paleo Valley, for example, I would opt for that one. And you wanna do a mixed tocopherol form of vitamin E ideally. And you can supplement up to 10 milligrams of melatonin to support egg quality and inflammation reduction. The next supplement, which also happens to be a hormone, so approach with caution, is DHEA. So only use DHEA or supplement with DHEA if you've tested your hormones and or been advised by a knowledgeable provider to use it. DHEA is a hormone used by the ovaries to make estrogen and testosterone. In women with diminished ovarian reserve, especially supplementing with DHEA for at least three months has shown to improve pregnancy rates with IVF. In the same study, women undergoing IVF were twice as likely to become pregnant if given DHEA prior to the start of the IVF cycle. 
DHEA may also improve the odds of getting pregnant naturally. DHEA is an upstream hormone from testosterone and estrogen, which means it can increase these hormones. If you are already making high amounts of testosterone and or estrogen, you do not want this. So please only supplement in response to low levels and in response to a good understanding of your overall hormonal panel. Dosing of DHEA, if you can benefit from it, is ultimately dependent on how low your DHEA levels are, but studies showing benefits use anywhere from 25 to 75 milligrams daily, three times daily. So the last supplement on my list is a bit surprising. I also wanna mention that this supplement may or may not be required by everybody, but I have seen it make a tremendous difference to fertility outcomes in those who do need it. And the supplement I'm talking about is vaginal probiotics. I like to recommend the Good Clean Love homeopathic suppositories or the Vagi Biome brand because both contain the super, super, super important lactobacillus crispitus strain, as well as the lactobacillus gasseri strain. The research to date shows is that lactobacillus dominant flora, especially lactobacillus crispitus, does have a key role in positive fertility outcomes, both with natural conception as well as with assisted reproductive technologies. Lactobacillus crispitus was most abundant in patients with positive fertility outcomes. Additionally, lactobacillus inners, another important bacterial strain, was underrepresented in cases of unknown infertility. My recommendation is to start with one capsule inserted vaginally twice per week in the first week of use, and then one inserted vaginally per week thereafter. So there you have it. These are some of the top supplements that I often recommend in practice that we have literature for to support positive fertility outcomes for people with endometriosis. There are many more I could have included. So if you want a part two, be sure to like and subscribe and drop me the words part two in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, share it with someone who might benefit, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video.